Hey everyone, it's another tarot card and it's the Hierophant. I love this card. <laughs> it's so hard, the Hierophant. It, and I didn't always feel this way about this card. I used to feel like, I don't know what the hell you're supposed to be telling me. I couldn't read someone's reading. I'm like, it was always one of those cards because they're always going to be cards that are a little bit quieter to you. And you're like, what? I don't quite have a full grasp of your meaning. Doesn't mean you don't understand the information about the card. You just, it, it hasn't been personalized. Some things are just like right there and you're like, yes, I get it. The hair font was not that way for me. And a lot of people also feel that way about the hair font. And I think a lot of it's that whole, he's the dogma and doctrine and staunchy, rigid representation of religion. And meanwhile, all the witches, neo-pagans, and everyone's like, oh, yuck. Eh. Bye, hair font. But he's a lot more than that. And he was my, what got me on board with the hair font and really a good understanding of him was my, when he was my year card. And he really was brilliant. My hair font year. Oh my God, I loved it so much. The lovers, not so much. No, it was strength. Strength was awful. Lovers were just kind of blah. Hair font, awesome. I really got to understand this card. For me, Yoda is a really good symbolization for this guy. A teacher who gives you information and then lets you go out and use it. Even if he thinks you're doing the wrong thing. So, but, so, Taurus, he represents Taurus, um, earth, very much an earth card. Tradition, teaching, conformity, homogenous behaviors and traditions. Um, the one thing that you can really do with him is recreate and update those dogma and doctrines. Reform, reformation. Martin Luther did some reforming. Um, and so reformation, I really feel, is some big hierophant energy of taking that dogma and doctrine, being like, this isn't working. This is wrong. This needs to be brought into the new morality and new ethics that are inclusive is how I see this card really needing to drive us right now. How can we be more inclusive in our spiritual and religious faith-based realms? All of us. Blue, the, everyone, just everyone. Um, Greek basically means, he's a Greek-based word, which basically here, phonesi, means manifestation of the sacred. So, that's loosely translated. He's often seen as a priest leader of faith, the dogma doctrine, getting stuck in stodgy at times. Um, on a bad day, I, he's all oh, that's really not good about any religious faith, misogyny, homophobia, fear-based attitudes based in religion, stuck in one place, bad faith choices instead of bona fides with good faith, you're just bad faith choices, bigotry based on crap ideas. I also wrote down there. Um, so, you know, if you're basing your stuff on a bunch of racist concepts, you got some crap ideas there and you need to reform your dogmas and doctrines. And this is something that should always be happening within spirituality, religion, faith-based things, is this reformation of ideas. And I feel that the hair font doesn't get enough credit on that idea of we always need to be looking at the reform of how we can make them better? How do we make them more inclusive? How do we represent other people within our faiths, our religions, our spirituality? Do we make a choice to exclude? Because there are faiths out there that do that. And some blatantly. And I don't feel like that's where the Hierophant is anymore. I feel like he's that kind of Reformation energy. And we need to see him more as that. 
not so much uh, stuck in their tra old traditions that can't ever change. Because God's got a lot of change in them. We just don't utilize it. We don't see it. Because we're too busy thinking, oh, hair font. Mm -hmm. Boring. Stodgy. Old. Outdated. So if you're feeling that about the hair font, you need to really bring some reform energy in there, I feel. So, symbols we tend to see, bulls, elephants, bulls, cars, obviously. Um, I know Curly Harris deck uses elephants. I have no idea what I wrote there. Pentagram, that's what I wrote there. Robes priest. Um, I can't remember what the key cross is. I always just call it the key cross. <laughs> um, we'll often see pillars. These are more tree trunks. And right there, two tree pillars. Book is often there. This one lacks a checkered floor. This kind of has a strong star seed um, vibe to me. And long before I ever heard of the star seed kind of stuff. Um, checkered floor meets you know, black and white good bad kind of dichotomy there oh yeah he's an interesting character also uh, the benediction you see weird manifestations often of like ceremonial headpieces he has out the pentagram in the back here he's got a cross on his chest along with that thing I can never read now it's gone hand in benediction blessing you and that's the thing to remember too it's like the, the hand is often in the benediction go in peace kind of thing so he's not I feel like I just feel like he needs not to be taught as like the dogma and doctrine of the old he's the reformation you see him much more as an active card in my life and really seriously before that year card year. And that's one thing, like tracking your year cards and working with them and watching how they actually show up in your life can be really interesting. And if I hadn't been doing that, I would not have the understanding or the relationship I currently have with this card. I would still be kind of that. What the hell do I do with that in a reading? Ugh. Um. And sometimes, too, I think when you bring in pop culture, such as um, like Kim Huggins' book uses um, Obi-Wan and Star Wars, I personally prefer Yoda. Um, and Obi-Wan also is a good example of that kind of teacher thing. But she also has um, Dumbledore, which I do not see so much as the Hierophant, as the Magician. Because the Hierophant's not going to be like, Hey, I'm going to put all of you in a really bad situation. And Snake, can you please kill me? Hair font, not that energy. Magician means to an end whatever it takes. Yes. So I can't see Dumbledore more as magician than hair font. Hair font, unless he's having a bad day, is somewhat concerned about your well-being. If he's having a bad day, well... Yeah, you know, it kind of goes back to, the, like, you're talking with the high priestess one of abusive behavior within, like, clergy and stuff like that. And it goes into that, too, where, like, you can't have this infallible clergy that allegedly does no wrong, because we have learned very much so that this is not true, whether it's the Roman Catholic Church, paganism, whatever. That's not necessarily true. And that without that li not liability. What's the word I'm looking for? It's gone. <laughs> I cannot think of dependence not dependency. You have to be able to call your leaders on their on their bad behavior. And hold them responsible. Hold them responsible works. It's there's a different word in there, but Hold them responsible works. That's two words. It's one single word I can't think of. But, you know, if you can't hold your clergy responsible or the clergy's organization will not hold them responsible, you don't have a healthy 
religion, or faith, or spirituality. So, you know, it circles back around to that. looking at abusive cycles and how abusive cycles come into our spiritual faiths and religions and all that kind of stuff. How do we reform that? How do we not make that not happen by holding people responsible and not letting them do crappy things? Reform, reform, reform. So kind of think of this dude as more like Martin Luther energy of reformation, reformation and constructive reformation, not the, you know, just... You want to have good basis. This is what we're looking for with the hair font. Alrighty. Go on, have a wonderful day. And go out there and be the love in the world. And go explore your inner hair font. It it's really a great card. Oh.